Hello again, Bob Stockberger, pastor of LifePoint Giles. Glad to be with you this midweek devotion. God's grace is not fair. Is that a true statement? Actually, it is. Jesus teaches us this. In the parable of the workers in his vineyard in Matthew 20, Jesus goes through how the father, the, the master, goes to pick up workers for the vineyard in the early morning, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and even five o'clock, the 11th hour, just one hour left to work. He picked up workers. They brought them to the field. They worked, they were a part of God's family. And at the end of the day, every worker got one denarius, the proper pay for a day's work. And the last ones hired were the first ones paid. And when the first ones hired that worked all day long, they hollered, this isn't fair. We worked all day and they get the same pay. And Jesus says these beautiful words, am I not allowed to do what I'll choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge, which actually means jealous, are you jealous of my generosity? So, therefore, the last will be first and the first will be last. This parable shows and teaches about God's grace. And the way this parable lays out, it is not fair. We would never think that paying someone for an hour's work the same as someone for 11, 12 hours work is the same. We know that's not fair, but that's the beauty of God's grace. We get something we don't deserve. Those workers weren't chosen. They were excluded. They may have felt they were, had no talents. They may have had sin in their lives, like life like I do. Many of us feel like we don't deserve God's grace. We got to get better before He can love us. Well, it's just the opposite. God chases us, comes after us. As you can see, all around the clock, the Master came seeking us. And then when He finds us, whether He finds us early in our life, or as we'll see in a minute, at the very end of our life, doesn't matter. The grace is the same. And that doesn't seem fair. And what's even more unfair is that I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. We are all sinners. Jesus teaches us that. The scripture teaches we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In the Psalms, there is not one good person on the earth. None of us are good on our own. We are filled with pride, with greed, with lust, with envy, but that doesn't stop God from coming after us all day long to come to His vineyard, His family of faith. And when we do, He gives us that grace that we don't deserve. And that's the big unfairness of God's grace. I don't deserve it. But because God sent His Son, Him who had no sin, to become sin for our sake so that we might have the righteousness of God. We're given the righteousness of God. How is that possible for a sinner like me? That's totally unfair. But God gives it to us. No matter what stage of our life we're in. Her name was Janie. She was dying of cancer, all metastatic all over. I was called in to see her, put her in the hospital. She was very near the end and a lot of pain. Put her in, started a morphine drip, wasn't helping the pain. She was feeling horrible. Then one evening when I made rounds, she said, Doc, what does it feel like to die? And I shared with her my experience with many patients, particularly Christians, as they go to death. Yes, it is a little unnerving. We don't know all the ins and outs of it, but we know the future. And I said, they see, and some of them have visions as they die and see the glory of heaven, the grace of God, the power of his arms bringing us to him. Our eyes close on this earth and open in his arms, wiping away our tears. And I said, that's the joy for a Christian. Death is not the end. It's just the beginning. I asked Janie, I said, do you know Jesus as your Savior? She said, no. 
We talked, I prayed with her, and, I, and she accepted Christ. She asked forgiveness for her sins. She claimed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. We prayed together, and she truly confessed Jesus. And yes, that's a deathbed confession, but it doesn't matter. God's grace is just as real to Janie as it is to someone like me who's accepted Christ when I was 12 years old. It's the same. And believe it or not, after she accepted Jesus, the next morning when I came in on rounds, she was sitting in bed. She said, I don't have any pain. I stopped the morphine drip. I don't have any pain. She lived two days pain-free and able to share her story with every member of her family about how Jesus has made such a difference in her life. And His grace gives her eternity with Him as even at the last minute. She died a peaceful death and is in His glory right now. Because you see, God's grace, the last, shall be first. No matter when we accept Him, He loves us just the same. And He is always, always seeking us, coming after us all day long. And I pray right now, some of you are struggling with this. You've been pushing away. Oh, Lord, I'll, I'll get to you somewhere down the road. Well, sometimes we don't have the luxury of knowing when we're going to die. There's a car wreck. There's a plane accident. There's a storm that we drown in a boating accident. We don't have that luxury. I pray right now for those of you who are pushing away and struggling with your decision to make Jesus your Lord, that you will accept Him today. I pray that right now. Pray with me. Father God, I just pray for everyone watching, particularly those who are struggling with a decision to make you their Lord. Father, I pray that today will be that day that they call upon your name, ask forgiveness for their sins, claim you as their Lord and Savior, and become baptized and join a family of faith in their hometown. Oh, Father, I pray that will happen today. Thank you, Father, for your grace, which is totally unfair. Number one, we don't deserve it. Number two, that grace is the same no matter when we accept it. And we can come to you knowing that you love us so much that whenever we accept you, we have the same gift, even if we're the last in line, as those at the front. We are saved and we have your grace and your love and eternity with you and a life of joy on this earth when we come to you in faith. Thank you, Father, for your unfair grace and your unending love for each of us. In your precious name I pray, amen. If you've accepted Christ with that prayer, please email me right down there, pastor at lifepointgiles.org. Look right here. If you would like to look at the full sermon on this text, uh, it'll be posted in a couple of days on our YouTube channel, Life Point Giles. You see that there. You can follow us on our Facebook page. Look at our uh, webpage. You can contribute to Life Point Giles if you care to on our Venmo. There it is right there. Whatever you do, I pray that today you will call Jesus your Lord. And if you don't have that church home and you're anywhere near Harrisburg and Giles County, please join us on Sunday at 1115 every Sunday as we worship God together. Have a blessed week, every one of you.